The last application I want to look at is finding derivatives using Taylor series. So consider a, an unknown function that has Taylor series that I'm giving right here. And I want to look at a few questions that we're going to be able to answer about the function f, even though I don't explicitly have uh, a nice representation of it. So the first thing I have here is, is what is f of 0? So keep in mind that this series we have here is centered at 0. And so what I'm taking advantage of is the fact that um, the given sum Because it is the Taylor series centered at zero for this function f, I know that it has to equal what how we define Taylor series. So the sum with terms kth derivative of f evaluated at zero over k factorial times x to the k. These have to be equal. And I know that f of zero is the k equals zero term in my Taylor series, right? If you write out the first term of the sum I have on the right, you get f of zero. That's the constant term of the Taylor series. If you write out the terms of the given series, then the constant term has to be our answer there. So um, f of zero is the constant term of the Taylor series. which implies in this instance that f of zero is uh, what we get when we plug in k equals zero, negative one to the zero times zero plus one over two to the zero. And so we're going to get one here. If I ask here, is f of x increasing or decreasing at x equals zero? Well, in general, we're going to look at the sign of f prime of 0. That's what we need to know if we're looking at increasing or decreasing. Well, we can see from our sum, again, that if we start to write out the terms, what I really want to look at is the coefficient of x to the first power. So we know that f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus dot 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 is equal to writing out the terms of what we see here. So we said the first term was 1. When I plug in k equals 1, I'm going to get a negative, And this is going to be 2 over uh, 2, so just 1, x to the first power, and so on. And what I care about here is this part. So from this observation, again, I'm equating what sits in front of x. So f prime of 0 is equal to minus 1. And of course, all I care about is that that's negative. So we're going to know that this function, f of x, is decreasing at f of 0, or excuse me, at x equals 0. And then finally, a bigger question, what is the 100th derivative of f at 0? So you can look at how I equated the coefficients here. And of course, maybe if I write out the first 100 terms, in fact, 101 terms, then we could look at those. But I don't want to do that. What I'd like to do instead is really focus on the coefficient of x to the k. So in the Taylor series, centered at 0, the coefficient of x to the k must be the kth derivative of f evaluated at 0 divided by k factorial. In the given Taylor series, the coefficient of x to the k is negative 1 to the k, k plus 1 all over 2 to the k. These have to be equal. So um, we equate the coefficient of x to the 100 on each side. So what does that look like? Well, for the true Taylor series, 
That should be the 100th derivative evaluated at zero divided by 100 factorial. If I want to get x to the 100 in my actual Taylor series, we know k is 100 to get x to the 100. And so I put in 100 for k elsewhere. So I get negative 1 to the 100 times 100 plus 1 divided by 2 to the 100. And so negative 1 to the 100 is just positive 1. Of course, this is 101. And so if I want to isolate that numerator from the left-hand side, I'm going to multiply both sides by 100 factorial. 101 times 100 factorial is, in fact, just 101 factorial. And we're dividing by 2 to the 100. So that's going to be this 100th derivative evaluated at 0 for this unknown function. Importantly, you should note that all three things that we asked for really focused on x equals 0. And that's, that's required, the center here. We only know information about f directly at the center. I couldn't use this series to answer questions about, say, the 100th derivative at x equals 2. I have no idea. And I also can't use this series to come up with a nice um, expression, other than in some form, for things related to f of x. So we're a little bit limited, but we can do quite a bit with what we have at 0. So what you should be thinking is, if we have a Taylor series, because the coefficients are defined in terms of derivatives of the function at the center, we can use the Taylor series to answer questions about those derivatives. And something that may be a little bit more powerful, so here I have this unknown function, we can actually use this technique with something familiar. So here I say find the 81st derivative of the function x times cosine of x squared evaluated at x equals 0. So if we had lots of time on our hands, we could sit down and take 81 derivatives of this function in turn and then plug in 0 at the end. But even just looking at this, I can see that taking one derivative would require the product rule and the chain rule. And you can only imagine how complex that would get as we continue this process. So while it's not hinted at in the, the, the statement of this problem, we can actually use Taylor series here. Again, the significance of 0 means that it's allowable to use our familiar Taylor series centered at 0. So let's do the work to find the Taylor series for this function. And then I can just look at coefficients to get derivatives at 0. What I'm starting with here is that cosine of x has Taylor series at 0 given by the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k x to the 2k over 2k factorial. So that's cosine of x. Then cosine of x squared, I can use function composition. And doing so, I will replace my x with an x squared. And then before moving on, I want to simplify that to recognize that what we really have is an x to the 4k. And then finally, to get the function, I need to multiply that function by x. And taking this series that I found in the line above, all I have to do is just increase the power of x by 1. So this becomes exponent 4k plus 1. And so now I have my Taylor series for the function g of x in this case. So notice what's significant here is, again, I can think about my coefficients of these powers of x as giving me information about derivatives of g at 0. One thing that's very different from the example above is that our x is not raised to just k. It's to the 4k plus 1. So what's going to happen here is if I were to write out the terms of this, it's going to skip over things. So I would have a, an x to the first power, an x to the fifth power, etc. What's coded into that when we're skipping over, say, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, that means that the derivatives had to have been 0. So if the coefficient was 0, that means the kth derivative divided by k factorial was 0. 
And the only way that can happen is if the derivatives are zero. So one piece of information I get right away is I know that this function is going to have second derivative zero, third derivative zero, fourth derivative zero, and then I can find the fifth derivative. Sixth derivative would be zero and so on. So if I want to find the 81st derivative, I'm going to look at the coefficient of x to the 81st power. And in the Taylor series, that should be the 8, well, this is g, so let me scratch that out. Um, in the Taylor series, that coefficient would be the 81st derivative of g at 0 divided by 81 factorial. Now, if I look here, I want to look for what I have circled in green. I want to plug in the appropriate k value so that that's giving me the coefficient of x to the 81. So I have to be a little bit careful here. I don't want to actually plug in k equals 81 because then that would give me the coefficient of x to the 4 times 81 plus 1. What I'm looking at here is I want to figure out what does k have to be so that 4k plus 1 equals 81. Well, we would need 4k to be 80, so we really need k to be 20. That's the k value I'm going to plug in. So when k is 20, what I've circled in green becomes negative 1 to the 20th over 2 times 20 factorial, which is 1 over 40 factorial. And now I can see that to solve for what I have in the numerator on the left, I can multiply both sides by 81 factorial. And I see here that the 81st derivative evaluated at 0 should equal 81 factorial divided by 40 factorial. So one thing to note here is, yes, this did require a little bit of work. I had to find the Taylor series for g of x. But if you imagine how much work it would have taken to find 81 derivatives of g, then you can see that this is quite a reduced amount of work. So this gives us a really nice alternative to be able to quickly calculate some very high order derivatives. Again, as long as I have a way to get the Taylor series at the appropriate center for the function at hand.